They feel as if they've almost run out of steam and just don't have, um, just don't have the strength. And I think that there are times in our lives when we can feel very drained and very wearied and very, very fatigued. And that's just where we are. And it might be because we've had to deal with so many different things in our, in our family life, in our work life, and, and just dealing with things one after the other after the other. And you get to this place where you just feel tired. And the Lord wants to say to us, I have something for you that I cannot give to the world, but I can give it to you because you are my precious child. I can give you the strength of the Lord. And I want to talk to you this morning about that, the strength of the Lord. What is it, the strength of the Lord? Paul says in Philippians, when talking about being content in all things, in Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things, or in fact, in the Greek it says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So my first question is this, what is the strength of the Lord? And secondly, how do we receive it in our lives? So let's pray. Father God, we pray that you would enable us to know your strength when we are feeling so weak. When we feel we've come to the end of our resources, we pray that we might learn to discover this, the beginning of yours. Would you, Lord, teach us how to pray and how to receive the strength of the Lord? Because it's something that we haven't yet, in many of our lives, fully grasped. We pray, Father, that this wonderful gift that you have for us, which sits on the shelf in heaven, isn't just sat there, but it's used by us in our lives when we feel we most need it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the strength of the Lord in Scripture, when in fact if you go through Scripture, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of references to the strength of the Lord. But in fact, if you look at it closely, there seems to be three types or three ways in which the Lord strengthens us. Firstly, he arms us. Firstly, he arms us, and we're going to be looking at that shortly. In other words, he empowers us in situations. Secondly, he can shield and fortify us. And thirdly, he can carry us. So let's have a look at the first one, arming us. Now, there's a lot of references in Scripture. I've just taken one, which is um, David's great song of victory. And we have that in 2 Samuel 22. So if you have your Bibles, you might want to turn to 2 Samuel and 22. And that's page 330 in your Bibles. And we start up at verse 33. It is God who arms me with strength. And makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. And my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You armed me with strength. In other words, what he's saying is that he can empower you. Now that's something that I, I don't really often pray to the Lord when I face a crisis. Lord, empower me. My first reaction is if there's a crisis is, actually, Lord, take it away. <laughs> I'm just going to come and stand over here. <laughs> and maybe, Lord, you can deal with the crisis. <laughs> or you can deal with the test or the situation. Or maybe somebody else could actually deal with it. That might be quite nice as well. But the Lord is saying, actually, I can empower you to deal with it. So rather than, I can't face this Lord, you need to take this away from me. 
Rather than, I can't face it, can someone else deal with it? Rather than, I can't face it, can I just literally walk away and put my head in the sand and pretend it's going to go away? It's a prayer that says, Lord, would you empower me, enable me to do that? I've, I've known a few moments in my life, and I regret actually that I haven't called on the Lord enough for his empowerment. But I remember when I was 18, and I was um, at a, a group called Croydon Camps, and they used to take children from disadvantaged backgrounds out to Devon and lose them for a week, and then see if we can round them up and take them back again. And I was only 18, only just 18, and I was put in charge of a group of lads, about 12 kids. <laughs> all teenagers from um, the disadvantages part of South London. <laughs> and, um, and it was, oh, it was so challenging. And because this is back in the early 80s, back in the day, where there was no sort of real safeguarding or health and safety or proper check. I was just like 18, looking after 12 lads in the tent on this campsite, trying to take control of what was going on. And I remember I discovered that one of them had a knife. So I thought, I better confront him and say, you know, I need the knife. You can't just have a knife on the campsite and walk around with a knife. And he pulled the knife out on me. And I just felt this moment where I just felt, and I can only describe it to you as empowered of the Lord. That's the only thing I could feel. I felt the strength of the Lord. And rather than saying, look, don't worry about the knife, actually, because, you know, it suits you. It, you know, you, you like the knife and just stay with the knife um, and just sort of, you know, just run out of the tent. I actually felt empowered by God. Ooh. Coming forward. And I remember in that being able to look straight in his eyes and just very calmly ask him to give it to me. But I felt the presence of God on that. And he just gave it, and I could see the terror in his eyes. And I, could, I, and I just calmly just took the knife off him. And it was just one of those moments. And I was very young in the Lord. I was only about two years a Christian. Where I felt empowered by God. And I feel that if your life, your Christian life is a bit like mine, we don't know this enough. We deal with a lot of things in our own strength. We cope with a lot of things in our own strength. Actually, we need to call on the Lord for his strength in given situations. He is able to empower us, for it is the Lord who arms us with strength. Ask him. Ask him to empower you. The next time you face something that feels overwhelming, Lord, empower me. Enable me. Be my strength. And enable me to deal with this. It might be that he'll give you wisdom. Or it may be that he will just steady you and strengthen you in your inner person. And may the Lord release that to you today. May you know the power of his strength in your heart and lives. So the first thing that we notice in scripture is that he, he can empower us, he can arm us, so to speak. Secondly, he also is able to shield us. In Jeremiah 16 verse 19, it says, the strength of the Lord is a place of refuge. He's my place of refuge. The Lord is my strength and my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. In other words, he is the stronghold of my life, Psalm 27. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. And there are times in our lives when we need to know that he, we are in this stronghold of God. And that's vital as well. Now, on this, all the illustrations I'm using for this sermon are all coming from that one traumatic week when I was 18, somewhere in North Devon. And um, on this occasion, I was asked to take these lads out on a two-day hike. I have no map reading skills. I have no sense of direction. 
I have very little idea on how to look after these kids. I'm only 18, and, um, and off we go. Off we go into some kind of Broadmoor place of disaster. Anyway, we started off, and as we were, as we were going, the wind started to pick up a little bit, and it got stronger and stronger and stronger. And by the time we got there, at the end of the day, um, which was not without any kind of you know, stress and distress by me, but fortunately the lads actually helped me out by helping me read the map. We got there, and the tent was just about holding on, because someone had driven out and put the tent up for us, and we were to walk to the tent. And it was just about holding on, and as we arrived, it blew. <laughs> <laughs> and things tore, and, and, and the things bent, and it just blew off. And, and there was nowhere for us to, to actually <laughs> reside for the night. And by that stage, I was in this, oh, Lord, I need you. I'm desperate. And I'm going to start crying in a minute, and it's not going to good. And it won't be good, because I'm, I'm, that, I'm that wrecked by this whole experience. And we found this beautiful little shed that was just lovely and we just found it near nearby and it was all clean and a clean straw and it was warm and snug we all went in there and we sat down and then the one of the boys said he said all right then mate tell us about jesus like that and it was one of those few moments where i thought actually i've just got an invitation to tell people about jesus and I was able, because of the trauma of the experience, I was able to say, do you know what? Jesus is a bit like this place where we found, this strong place in the midst of a storm, whereas actually outside of him, we we're going to be out there exposed to all the wind and the elements. And I was able to share who Jesus was to them. And that was a very marked experience for me because hearing the wind howling around and being in that place where it was really calm and really warm and really secure made me realize that actually the strength of the Lord, as it says in Scripture, is our fortress. The strength of the Lord is our place of safety. This is what Jeremiah says. He says, the strength of the Lord is my refuge, my fortress in a time of distress. And Jeremiah knew much about distress in his long ministry of 40 years to Israel. And there are times when we need to seek the Lord, and again, we need to ask for it and pray, Lord, would you just at this time enable me to feel just that fortress of protection around me, that strengthening around me, so I can do what I need to do, that stronghold for my life. And then thirdly, thirdly, the strength of the Lord in Scripture is referred to as being carried by him. Now that's an interesting kind of concept carried by the Lord. And we're going to go to a piece of scripture which you know really, really well. It's the definitive piece of scripture on the strength of the Lord. And it's in Isaiah 40 and verse 29. Isaiah 40 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. Let's see if your fingers can still work and you can, you've got some feeling in them. And your toes can still work and you've got some feeling in those too. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength and they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint. Now, I want to just draw you back to the end of verse 31. They will soar on wings like eagles. There are moments in our lives where we need to learn how to lean back onto God. The eagle does not fly into the great heights. The eagle is able to get to a highest, the highest altitude of any bird on earth. 
He can out-altitude every single other living creature. And it does it by simply opening up its wings at nearly 10 feet in span and just catching the thermals as they, and, just, and it just literally rises up. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't push any effort into it. It literally just rides up on the thermals to the huge heights. And in that, I think Isaiah has given us this wonderful picture of learning how to lean back into God, how to rest in him and let the strength of the Lord pick us up and take us. I want us to learn how to do that because I think there are times when we just haven't got the strength ourselves. We need to learn how to lean back. Now, the third illustration taken from this traumatic week in my youth is when we used to play the trust game. And I don't recommend you play the trust game because the trust game, which people used to play back in the day, um, normally involved people at some point going to A&E with serious head injuries. Um, because it involves basically where you get a group of people, it used to be done in corporate settings as well, um, and one person would stand there and there'd be like a, a two or three others behind them and they would learn how to just lean back like that and you would catch them. And they would always have this sort of 22 stone man standing there waiting to lean back and a couple of very kind of petite people at the back who when he leans back go, oh, like that, <laughs> smack onto the ground. So I don't recommend we do it, but uh, we did it at that time. And I don't know if you've ever done it. And anybody play the trust game, don't ever play it again. Okay, okay. Uh, there is this moment where you are genuinely putting your trust in the other person and you are deliberately leaning back and we've got to learn how to genuinely put our trust in him and to deliberately lean back because I feel the Lord saying to us you don't lean on me enough you're not leaning back we're trying to do too much in our own strength because if you were to lean back onto me then you would learn what it means to rest in me and I can take you to the heights because that's all that the eagle does effortlessly learns to lean back if you like open its wings and soar how do we receive the strength of the Lord when we need it. Well, having scoured scripture and, and gone right the way through, loads and loads of examples, I was amazed to see how many references the strength of the Lord has in relation to praise. The strength of the Lord and song, the strength of the Lord and singing, the strength of the Lord and praise. And I'm just going to pick out a couple. Exodus 15 is the great song of Moses. Where he says in verse 2, The Lord is my strength and my song. And these two things are really connected. And if we can learn, actually there are times when we can just come into prayer, but also, and I urge you in this, come into praise. Come into praise and seek the strength of the Lord. Then we will see a wonderful thing happen for us. We will see him touch us and bless us in ways that we haven't done before. Because I really believe that this is something we need to develop the strength of the Lord. And in Psalm 59, just another reference there, O oh my strength, I watch for you, but I will sing of your strength. O oh my strength, I sing and I praise for you. And so there's this wonderful connection throughout Scripture between praise and the strength of the Lord. And I want us to just learn how to, in prayer and in praise, 
ask the Lord, Lord, would you empower me by your spirit, strengthen me by your spirit to deal with the situation? Lord, would you enable me to feel your strength around me like, like a powerful fortress in a howling storm? And Lord, would you help me just to lean back into you and to trust you with all of my heart. And so may the, may the strength of the Lord embrace you. May the strength of the Lord empower you. May the strength of the Lord equip you and enable you to live the life he wants you to live to the glory of his name. Amen. Let's just pray for a moment. Oh, Father, would you just equip us, Lord, with all that we need. Give to us that strengthening. Give to us that power to live in accordance to your will and your purpose, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.